today I'm going to show you how to do freezer paper prepared applique. I have all of my tools uh, laid out here and I'll explain each one of them and uh, what I use them for. I have three different types of scissors. Um, I have a paper scissor and I have uh, fabric shears and I have an embroidery scissor uh, each uh, for something different and uh, the embroidery scissor should have a very sharp uh, point on it. I have needles and these are applique needles and these are two of my favorites. Um, these happen to be by Clover. Uh, they're number 12 applique needles and they're very fine needles. Um, the reason that they're very fine is that they'll be able to slip through the, the fabric easily and uh, not disturb any of the, the elements that you're going to be stitching, uh, especially around the edges where you want it to be nice and crisp. Uh, the applique needles, um, one of the, I guess, disadvantages of using them and them being so fine is that they have a very small eye. So it helps when you cut your thread to cut your thread off at an angle and then thread that angled piece of thread through the eye of the needle. And if you put your uh, a background behind the needle, something that is either white or dark, you'll be able to see that eye just a little bit better. I have applique pins, and applique pins are much shorter than your, your average pin. Uh, the reason for that is that you can pin your designs on the background, and uh, they don't get in the way of your stitching as much as uh, a, a long, regular sewing pin would. I have two different kinds, or uh, two markers here. These are two of my favorite markers. Uh, they're a fine marker, and they're also permanent marker. And, and that's really important that they be permanent because eventually we're going to get the freezer paper wet and you don't want that ink uh, to dissolve. So uh, a permanent marking pen. Uh, I have two different kinds of glue sticks that I use and um, this one is by Dritz and it's a water soluble and that's very important. As I mentioned, we're gonna get the uh, freezer paper and the glue uh, wet eventually, so it has to be a water-soluble uh, fabric glue stick. And this one is made by Dritz. I happen to purchase it at my local quilt shop. You'll find it at other stores as well. This is by Elmer's, and it's a repositionable glue stick. And this one I found at an office supply store, uh, of one of the big box stores. And uh, the advantage of it is that you don't need water to remove the freezer paper from your design. Uh, it makes the freezer paper in your design much like a post-it note is. And you can pick up the design and move it and reposition it as the name suggests. The disadvantage of using this glue stick is that um, it gets on your fingers. And in order to get it off of your fingers, you almost have to peel it off and uh, it's very sticky. This one, if it gets on your freezer or on your fingers, uh, you can remove it with a little bit of water, which is why I have handy uh, a wet paper towel and then also a dry paper towel that I can use to clean my fingers. Another disadvantage of this one is that as you're stitching, uh, some of the glue will get on your needle and your glue get, or your needle will get a little bit tacky, uh, which is irritating. Uh, I have, some thread and this thread is by Wonderfill and it's called Invisifill and it's 100 weight poly thread. It feels much like a satin thread and when you stitch with it, it's, um, it's almost like the thread just melts into the, the background uh, in the applique design. And it comes in a variety of different colors. Um, this came in a package that I purchased but I'll explain later when I do my stitching. To me, this is probably my favorite color because to me, if you are able to hide your stitches, it really doesn't matter what uh, color your thread is. Um, I use a thimble, uh, a rubber thimble, and the reason I use a rubber thimble is that uh, if you use a metal thimble, you will find that your thread, thread will fray. Um, the, this thread is very fine, it's strong, but it's very fine thread, and as you're stitching uh, with the metal thimble, uh, the needle or the thread will break uh, as you continue to stitch. So I really enjoy the uh, rubber thimble. I have a little dish of water. Uh, we'll use this when it comes time to take the fr freezer paper off of the design. And sometimes I use a, 
uh, little artist brush too, and I'll explain a little bit more about that. I have my uh, design here, and then freezer paper. Um, any brand of freezer paper really works quite well. Uh, it, it doesn't make any difference um, what brand that you use. At least I haven't found anything different. So to get started, what I do is I take my design, my pattern, and I trace the design using one of my, my pens. And you have to take care when you look at your pattern, designers will stay on the pattern if this pattern has been reversed or if it has not been reversed. And that's very important because these designs are symmetrical. So that it doesn't matter about, uh, you don't have to reverse those designs. But this little leaf here, uh, it would, if you trace it on this side of the pattern, it is a right facing leaf. If you use your light box and you trace it, uh, it will become a left facing leaf. So for designs such as a bird or a little animal that is moving this direction, you want to make sure that you uh, use your light box because we're going to be putting this freezer paper on the back side of the fabric and that will reverse your direction of your design. Okay, so now that I've traced this on the freezer paper and I've traced it onto the dull side of the freezer paper, I'm going to cut it with my paper scissors. And it's important, not so much the drawing of it be nice and uh, crisp, but rather my cutting. And in order to cut, uh, rather than move the scissor around the design, I'm turning the freezer paper around and, and continuing to cut and getting a very smooth edge. And you want a very smooth edge because we're going to be folding the fabric up around the freezer paper and you don't want any little bumps along the way. Okay, so now I've got my design cut out and in the interest of time, I didn't uh, bring my iron out, but what I did was I put the shiny side, the waxy side of the freezer paper down on the back side of my fabric. And with no steam and heat, high heat, uh, I pressed with my iron. I didn't drive my iron, I didn't iron with it. I pressed with my iron in about 10 seconds and then moved the iron to the remainder of the design and pressed again until the freezer paper was adhered to the back side of the fabric. And then you want to wait just a few seconds until this cools because if you pick this up too soon and start moving it around, the edges of the freezer paper are going to come off. So be patient. Uh, wait just a few seconds and let it cool. Then take your fabric shears and cut away from the, the freezer paper. And I would say it's a quarter of an inch or maybe just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. And this is the edge that we're going to glue down to the freezer paper with our glue stick. And it doesn't need to be exact, just so that it's um, enough so that you can turn it over. Okay, so now that that's cut, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the glue. And I keep a, a piece of freezer paper handy for uh, applying the glue so that I don't get any of the glue stick on the, um, the cutting board or whatever your uh, surface is. I'm going to use this glue stick, the washable or water soluble glue stick, and apply it to the freezer paper. And it's almost like you're, you're coloring with your, your glue stick, running it back and forth. And um, I would say do maybe about a third of this because otherwise it'll dry and it won't be sticky any longer. So now pick it up and where I glued, we're gonna turn the seam allowance over. And I use the side of my thumb and it's a little bit of a twisting motion and adhere that seam allowance down. And it's not, this isn't the important part. The edge of the seam allowance doesn't need to be adhered to the freezer paper, but the edge here is the most important part. And that's why we wanted to make sure we had a very smooth surface when 
uh, we cut the design out of the freezer paper. Okay, and that's as far as I, I glued. And then you would continue to do that all the way around uh, with your glue stick. And every once in a while you may have missed a little bit of glue on the back, on the freezer paper. Just go back and put a little bit more uh, glue on there until you get your, the edge completely turned under around your design. Here's a flower that I, I started, and something else that I want to note to you that's, that's very important is sometimes you have a concave edge, and you need to clip right up to the freezer paper down the center of that edge, and right up to the point. And then we're going to take our glue stick, and I'll just do a small portion here to give you an example of how to turn that under. First thing I do is I turn under the point where I cut on both sides, then start over here and start turning it under along the edge. And then you have a nice deep point. I'd also like to show you how to do um, a point on a leaf. Uh, a lot of leaves in, in applique. And so uh, this one, I'm going to glue the entire leaf because I should be able to get it done before the glue starts to, to dry. And turn this, I start with the point of the leaf and turn it under and turn it so that it's pointing down more this direction than pointing straight up. And that'll help you later when it comes time to stitch. Okay, so I got the first part of the point done. And this one is a, a little bit sharper curve than the previous piece we did, so it takes a little extra skill to get it, and patience to get it around the edge, making sure that you don't get any creases in, in the seam allowance. And if you do, you'll be able to see it on the, the other side. Now when I get up to this point, I use my thumbnail and turn in the seam allowance. And you can see just a little bit of the seam allowance will be poking out. And we can get that, either clip it off or you can turn it under with your, your needle. Now I did a, a good job in going around the curves. There might be a little bit of a, a point there. And so I'm gonna look on the other side and yep, there's a little bit of a crease there. So I'll work that in. And now you've got a nice crisp edge. And every once in a while, some of the freezer paper, maybe just because you're handling the piece or uh, just over time, might come unglued a little, little bit. Uh, there's really not a need to go back and, and glue that because as you're appliquing, you can kind of tuck that under uh, with your needle as you uh, do your stitching. Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to stitch and show you how my applique stitch. And I have one more tool that I use and it's my pillow. Um, I always use a pillow when I, I'm stitching um, and sitting on my, uh, sitting in my chair. And the reason for that is I like to uh, have very good posture where I'm sitting as opposed to getting hunched over because you, you'll get tensed up and uh, you'll feel like you need a, a massage afterwards. But um, when I thread my needle and because the thread is quite slippery uh, and silky, the thread doesn't like to stay in the needle, the eye of the needle. It'll come out rather easily. So I tie maybe two, sometimes three times, uh, tie the thread onto the eye of the needle and that'll keep it from uh, slipping out. So now I'll start my applique, and I've already done part of this, this part of the flower. And I start from the back side, knotting my thread, and come up through the, the edge of the design. And then when you go back down, you go down where the, the thread came up, and it's almost as though my needle is pointed more that direction than this direction. And when I go down and come up, in a very tiny stitch, 
I ju just try to grab the edge of the fabric where it's turned under. I'm getting the, trying to get the back side of the fabric rather than coming up on the front side. So by going down and at a little bit of an angle, turning it and coming up, you can grab that back side of that fabric and continue to stitch. A little bit of a twisting motion there, but again, very tiny stitches because it's just as though if you stitched a seam allowance with a basting stitch uh, versus maybe 12 stitches per, in per inch, you would see gaps. And the same thing with the applique stitch. You want a very continuous, solid uh, stitching line, which I'm do trying to do here by taking very tiny stitches. Okay, now when stitching this particular design, uh, another thing that's important to note is that um, I try to have a little method to my madness when I start stitching. I started stitching here, I went around, I came down the stem, I went around this flower, down the stem, back up the stem, around the flower, until, or around the leaf, until I got back up uh, to this part of the design. And the reason I like to do it that way and think about it uh, as I'm stitching is because if you stitched from this flower and then uh, carried your thread over, or this leaf, and then carried your thread over to this leaf, later we're gonna be cutting away the back side of this background fabric and you would end up cutting that thread where you carried over. So uh, it's important to stitch each element and stop and start again. Okay, so now I'm going to show you uh, how to cut away the back design. And this is a flower that, or part of the flower that I've already appliqued. And now I'm going to take my embroidery scissor and cut, and it's, you have to look for your stitching, and because my uh, thread matches the background so nice, it's a little difficult to see the stitching, but uh, take care as you, you cut. And the freezer paper kind of gives you a little extra insurance here so that you're not cutting through the um, design that's appliqued. Uh, you can kind of run your scissor along that freezer paper that you can fill. And I'm using, oh, maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. And again, it's not um, important that you be real exact. Just get the, cut away the background of this particular flower. Okay. And that's cut away. Now, another thing I'd like to mention to you is um, how I handled the stem of this, this flower. This is the stem, and I used um, a quarter inch strip of freezer paper and ironed it onto the back side of this stem fabric. And then rather than using a glue stick, I was able, because it's a nice straight design, uh, I was able to just take my iron and iron it down so, and then remove the freezer paper before I did any of the stitching. So no glue stick needed there on the stem. So again, I just cut it away, and now it's time for us to uh, remove the freezer paper with a little bit of water. So I'm going to take my, my water and put a little bit on my finger, and just, just enough to get it wet. You don't need to soak this too, too much. And um, I'm always fearful that one of the fabrics I use in the applique someday is going to bleed on me. So that's, you might want to test out your fabrics beforehand uh, to be sure that none of them, them bleed. But again, uh, you don't need a whole lot of water, just enough to dissolve the, uh, the glue. And it, it takes a second for it to kind of kick in and for it to, for it to dissolve. And you'll find that you might have missed a spot and you can go back. Now I also, Sometimes I use an artist brush and I'll take the artist brush and get it wet and then just kind of dab it on here. And uh, it comes in handy when you're trying to get the freezer paper off of the point and you cut and you can kind of get that artist brush up into the point to help dissolve some of that glue. So now I should be able to remove the seam allowance and the freezer paper And see if there's any areas that I, I missed. 
sometimes you put on a little bit more glue than in one area than the next, so it might take a little extra um, power with your fingernail. Okay. Take that out. And now the freezer paper should just pull out of the, and it, remember that the freezer paper was ironed on, so you're having to remove that um, waxy part as well as the seam allowance. And being a little gentle on your stitches too. Okay, so the freezer paper now has been removed and I just press it down with my, my fingers. Okay, so now that's done and I have another one that was already done where the freezer paper has been removed and there are additional elements of this flower that need to be stitched on, but I had to get that freezer paper out of there first. So here are two more centers that go in the flower. Uh, so I put this next design on, applique it down, turn it over, and I'll be able to see where I stitched, remove the freezer paper, take the next element, you'll be able to stitch it down now, applique it down, and once again, you'll remove the background as we did before, and then use the water and remove the, the freezer paper. And those are the basics of applique using freezer paper. And I've done many, many quilts uh, this way, and I tried needle turn, and I really did try needle turn, but um, I just found that I didn't get uh, the look that I wanted. But by using freezer paper, one of the things that I especially like is that it leaves a very nice crisp edge uh, around here, and um, I just wasn't able to achieve that with other techniques. So. I hope you've learned something today from me, and I really do hope that you'll try uh, freezer paper and a glue stick to uh, do some applique. I'm sure you'll love it. Thank you.